Okay, so hi everyone and welcome. Uh, so this will be a live coding session and I will show you how to migrate a React instance search application from v6 to v7. But first, let me introduce myself a little bit. So my name is Emeric Giraudet. Uh, I'm live here uh, from Lille in Northern France and I'm a software engineer in the front-end experiences team, the same team as Imogen, whom you just saw. But first, what is React Instance Search v7? Uh, so it's a new version that replaces both Instance Search v6 and in, uh, React Instance Search hooks. Uh, it's actually a rewrite uh, of React Instance Search v6, and it's now a renaming of React Instance Search hooks. So if you are using React Instance Search hooks, now it's very straightforward um, to upgrade. Um, so it comes with a lot of new features. Um, which are from Instance Search JS. Uh, the first one is uh, automated events. Uh, then there's also optimistic UI, built-in routing, and also React hooks, so you can so that you can build uh, custom widgets in a more composable way than before. And uh, while you were talking about Next.js in the chat, uh, we also released a new package, which is experimental still. Um, but it allows you to use uh, React Instance Search with the new Next.js app router. So let me show you my screen. And um, this is the, the application we're going to upgrade. Uh, so it's a e -commerce, simple e-commerce template. Um, it has routing, so we'll see first how to upgrade that routing. It has multiple widgets. Uh, we'll see how to upgrade the props and so on. And it also has some custom uh, widgets, for example, when there are no results. Uh, there's this little um, thing, widgets, and you can clear the filters directly. And there's also some stuff for mobile. Um, so first step is to upgrade the packages. So. React Instance Search DOM, uh, we, it no longer exists. Uh, we figured most people are using uh, DOM anyway. So now you just have to import React Instance Search simply. Uh, so as of today, the last version is 7.1.0. And as it already includes the typing, you no longer have to install a definitely typed package in your dev dependencies. So let's go ahead and install our latest versions. And uh, we can now get into the app.js file, um, which is basically like the, the entry point of our application. Um, so it has uh, the instant search uh, component, and it describes how our search UI should look like. So right off the bat, uh, we see that there is a, an error. Uh, so we have to import from React Instant Search. And now we get a bunch of errors because the props no longer exist. Um, by the way, you can notice that it's a JavaScript file, but with a JS config file, uh, you can tell it to uh, check uh, JS files without having to write TypeScript files. And I think it's pretty handy, uh, especially when you have to do migrations like this. Um, so first, we're going to upgrade the routing. Uh, so with React Instance Search v6, there had to be a lot of steps to enable routing. Uh, you had to uh, do all the mapping yourself and so on. So in this example, there was a URL sync uh, high order component here, but we no longer need that. You'll see it's much simpler now. Actually, I can just delete this file here. We go back there. So we no longer need the props here. And simply we can remove all these props and add a single uh, Boolean prop called routing and that's done. Uh, you now have routing enabled with just this prop. Uh, you can also um, customize a little bit with router and state mapping, but I, I think by default, it's, it's pretty good. Um, so that brings us to our second uh, step is, I can also remove this. Our second step is to uh, edit all the prop names uh, from uh, from components that are from React Instance Search. So here we see there's an error Let's do control space. Okay, the new name is highlighted tag name. So it's done for those two widgets. Then for search box, um, placeholder is no longer in translations. Now you directly have a prop here. And submit, you can see there's an error. It's now submit icon component. 
which takes a component instead of an element. So we're going to quickly make it into a component by just uh, wrapping it in uh, in a narrow function. Then let's see. Okay, there's an error here. It's now reset button text. All right. Uh, you might notice this seems a bit uh, repetitive, but uh, I, I'll show you later. There are code mods to automate this. Um, so here, placeholder, same. It's searchable placeholder because we're in a refinement list. For toggle refinement, instead of value, it's now on. Uh, in this case, it's a Boolean facet. So it makes sense to have this on, but you can also, if you have, for example, for brands, you can set on is Apple, off is Samsung. Um, it's really up to you. But there are a lot of new props and uh, which allows you to like make better search UI. Um, then next is sort by. So a lot of widgets at this default refinement prop, um, but it's no longer the case in React Instance Search v7. Uh, now they are all uh, under the same prop in uh, Instance Search, which I will show you. So it's a prop called initial UI state, and it allows you to mutualize all your default refinements that you want. So here we'll say for the instant search uh, index, I want my default sort by to be this one. Great. And then we have a last error here, which is for hits per page, and it's the same uh, default refinement. But this one, hits per page, is a bit different. Uh, you can actually set the default right here in the items. And that's it for this file. Um, so now we can get to uh, upgrade the customized uh, widgets. So the first one we run into is uh, Clear Filters Mobile. So here I will update and use. So previously to clear filters, there was no connect clear refinements. So you had to use uh, current refinements. But now you have access to use clear refinements, which is going to make the code a lot easier. So we're going to use this hook. And you can see that it returns a refine function. So we can now remove this. And here we just call refine with no argument. That's not needed. And we can remove this call to connect. And it's done for this file. Next, we have no results. So this one had access to the search results. If you want access to the search results, you have to use the use instant search hook. So let's call it and check what it returns. So it returns a bunch of stuff, like for adding middlewares, having access to the UI state, and so on. But uh, in our case, we're just interested in the search results. So I will rename it to search results so that we don't have to update all the code down below. And here we also have a little widget that we can update. So clear refinements, we've seen it's now reset button text. Then clears query. Instead, you have an excluded attributes uh, prop, which by default has an array with query. But here we'll put an array with nothing so that we clear all refinements, including query. And we can remove this call to connect. All right, next is uh, ratings. Uh, so this one is a bit special. Uh, before, uh, we used connect range to create a rating menu. But instant search JS has a connect rating menu uh, function. However, it's not available in React Instant Search. But I'll show you how you can use a very useful hook called use connector, which is at the base of every almost every hook we have, uh, which allows you to use an instance search JS connector, uh, whether you made it yourself, or it's from a third party library or from our own libraries, um, you can use them. So we'll do const equals use connector. And here I will say connect rating menu, and it imports directly from instant search, which is very handy. And here props is going to be here so that we can pick up the attribute that's passed uh, in ratings. I will show you how it's used. You can see here ratings, attribute, rating. So it gives us access to uh, create URL that we need, items, and refine. OK, so I removed. There was a lot of uh, 
of logic uh, that was previously needed, but now it's not needed anymore. So we're going to iterate over items. And this same, the logic is not needed anymore. You can directly see if the rating is refined by using rating that is refined. Uh, same for calling refinement. It's much easier just to refine rating the value. And for the stars, the rating also has the stars in it. So we do rating that stars and it's a array of Boolean. So we can do here is star full. We don't need all this computation here anymore. And it's all good. It's, we can even remove this here and remove that. And it's migrated to V7. And next is results number mobile. Um, so we have connect stats instead, we're gonna use use stats, but there's a little problem here. Uh, this is a class component. And as you know, class components, they cannot use hooks. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna create a high order component, kind of like connect stats. We'll actually name it connect stats. So we have to change less code. Uh, so it's a function that takes a component and returns a new augmented component. So it takes props. We're going to use use stats and return the component with the spread of props and what stats returns. And that's it. Um, so now this class component has access to uh, what use stats return. And it's nice if you have like very big class components that you can't migrate right away. And last but not least is save filters mobile. Um, this one is going to be very straightforward as it's a function component. So here we can just do const number hits equals use stats. Can remove this here, remove the call to connect stats. And it's done. And now we can try if it works. Let's reload our screen and yeah, it works. It now uses React Instance of V7, which is a complete rewrite. And it still looks just the same with routing, the custom widget. And yeah, it's, it's great. So uh, that's it for the live coding. And um, so you can check the step-by-step -step guide, uh, which is available here. And uh, also I was talking about the code mods. Uh, it's a single uh, line that you have to run through your terminal. Uh, you can replace uh, SRC by your directory. And uh, yeah, it will uh, migrate most of what I've shown. Um, and it will also like output some comments if, the co if, the, if it can't be automated. Um, even with links to the to the upgrade guide. Um, so it's great, you should definitely check it out. Um, and so thank you uh, everyone for attending my live coding session. Uh, as this is live, I can answer questions, so feel free. And uh, yeah, thank you. Very cool, thank you so much, Emmerich. Um, we had a few questions coming through. I think a couple of them were actually left over from, from Imogen. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, someone was asking, Roger was asking, you know, is, is this only for folks who know how to code? And uh, yeah, so these dev bits are definitely very uh, dev focused. We love live coding, but stick around. You're going to see there are some sessions later today that are a little bit more low code, a little bit more about around design. But absolutely, we're we're focused on developers here and making their lives either easier, which is why I love to see that there's a code mod available uh, for this upgrade process. Um, another question we had was. Uh, this is kind of a long one from Vinny B. Um, it's but the core of it is about mono repos. Um, so Vinny has a mono repo that sort of commingles um, some React components, Algolia facets. Um, there's a um, an NextJS project as well, and he was curious about uh, if this new version of Instant Search uh, supports mono repos. It should, yeah. Um, I know there are some you can run into troubles if you have different like versions running sometimes. Um, but as you've seen, the migration is actually pretty straightforward, especially with code mods. 
So I don't think it will be too much of an issue personally. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Matthias, and again, I, I would encourage you, if you can ask in the Q&A, it makes it a little easier, but I'm kind of skimming through the chat as well. Uh, there's a question about the beta package for App Router. Mm -hmm. Is that available? Is the, can, can people grab it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's actually, maybe someone can send it in the comments, someone from the team, uh, but we have a, a guide for server-side rendering, and it includes the steps on how to, uh, how to use the new package. Um, and yeah, it works great. Um, like really excited about this. Uh, it was a lot of work, um, but now we support both ways of making Next.js uh, applications. Um, that's great. Cool. Uh, another question from Brent, are there performance or feature enhancements in, in V7? I mean, obviously there's the transition over to hooks, which I think makes a lot of customization a lot easier. Uh, anything else from a performance perspective? Uh, from a performance perspective, uh, well, as I was talking, there's the optimistic UI. So, mm -hmm. for example, on, on mobile, uh, if you're on 3G, for example, uh, before optimistic UI, when you were clicking on a refinement, it wouldn't update the checkbox right away. But now it does, uh, and, it, and it starts uh, the request. So it can be a bit more snappy instead of just staying frozen. Um, like this is one example. Nice. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Eric, for walking us through this. I'm really curious to see how the code mod works for folks. Uh, definitely, you know, let us know if you're making this transition, uh, if the tooling helps. Uh, we're trying to do everything we can to reduce friction for you all. Uh, and I think tools like that really go a long way towards it. So thanks again.